everybody. Yes, sir. Hallelujah. I thank God for being here. Thank God for being here. Thank God for his grace and his mercy. I thank God for, for life. Amen. Thank God for the full use and the activities of my limbs. Thank God for the blood still running warm in my veins. I got in the habit of just thanking God more for what he do for me and what he's done for me. And what he hasn't did to me. Amen. I know what should have happened to me. Yeah. All right, man. You know, so I just, I like to be real and upfront with God. Amen. So, you know, we ain't, no. So, uh, you know, thank God for keeping my mind. Yeah. Because, uh, as the sister, sister was saying, and she was telling her story and testimony, I can I can relate. You know, I had to thank God for keeping my mind because the devil did try to make me think I was gonna lose my mind. You know, I was uh, going through stage and I didn't know where I wanted to stay, and I was staying with my dad, and I wanted to come back home, and I wanted to go to a different school and this and that, and I didn't know what I wanted to do. People pulling on me, come do this and come do that and play here and play here, and I know I wanted to come. I know I wanted to be where the truth was. And I know I couldn't leave what he was right, preaching, right? But it was just like. I need a, a, a re, I need a transformation. You see what I'm saying? In my mind. So I want to thank God for keeping my mind. I didn't need no psychiatrist in the long run. I didn't need no psychiatric help. What I needed was a personal relationship with God. So if I look to the hills, I was in a pit. That's that's where I'm going. I'm sorry. My, my letter is O, and I'm going to Revelation 17 and 14. Y'all don't have the time. I'm gonna try to be quick. Amen. It says, uh, "These shall make war with the Lamb." And I'm gonna stay there. First of all, already I had to uh, get myself to understand that there's always gonna be obstacles. There's always gonna be adversity. We just started reading and says, and there shall be war. It's going to be war with the land. Yeah. All right. And that's the first sentence. See what I'm saying? So there's always, in the beginning, as soon as you start out, especially in your personal relationship with Jesus Christ, there's always going to be adversity. Yeah. As, soon as, as soon as the devil realizes that you want to give your heart to God and make up your mind, he's going to straight come at you. Boom. I don't want you to do that. All right. So now, I'm going. I'm, 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 I'm leaving Revelation. I'm going to Genesis 37 and 23. And it says, and it came to pass when Joseph was coming to his brother, he stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him. Now, just like me and all of the young people in here, I believe we all are chosen. Joseph was chosen. And the devil knew that. When Joseph starts to bring it out, and he started telling people, you know, his dreams and things I was reading, he started telling all his dreams and he had a, a few of them. And he told it to his father, he, he was rebuked at once, and he, he, he started telling his brothers and they got jealous because he had a lot of brothers. You see what I'm saying? And they, they stripped him, you know, they got jealous, you know, let's go kill him. They all, they want to kill him at first, but then the Spirit of God rose up in, in Reuben, I believe it was Reuben, and he said, no, we can't kill him. So they, they came up with another thing to do and, you know, let's put him in the pit. They took him and they put Joseph in the pit. I believe that that's exactly what it was. Because I had a stage, I was going through a depression stage with my mother. Going through the depression stage, and she constantly asked me, she said, um, what's, what's wrong with you? You remember that? What's wrong with you? And, uh, and, and what are you doing? Where your mind at? Stuff like that. And I, could, I, I couldn't say nothing. I didn't want to say nothing at first, but then the, the devil was mad. Don't even say nothing. Don't even tell her how you feel. Don't do this. So I didn't say nothing. I, I, my mouth had just be, got shut up. I couldn't say nothing. I was depressed, I was down, I didn't know what I wanted to say. I was just back and forth. And it was just like, oh my God. Well, I was thinking, what is wrong with me? What is wrong with me? She said, she asked Johnny, I said, Johnny, talk to Terrence. I don't know what's going on with him. This and that, and he's doing this, he's not doing that. And I was just feeling so down, but I felt it was a pit. That's exactly what it was. Just like Joseph was chosen, 
And God, the devil knows that I'm chosen. Okay. He know I want to do what's right. He know I want to live just like Christ. Oh. I try, before I do everything, I was at one point, I was trying to think, what would Jesus do yeah. before I made every decision? Yeah. And the, the devil knew that. So he started hitting me with stuff, and he threw me into the pit. He knows that I wasn't as tight with God. You see what I'm saying? My relationship wasn't as tight as it should be, and it was space for him to creep in. Wow. So he, he, they put me in the pit. And they say, and they took him and cast him into the pit. Yeah. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. Oh, wow. They put the man in the pit. And the pit could be anything. Yeah. It could be depression. Yeah. It could be yeah. low self-esteem. It could be it could be lost. The pit yeah. could be anything. Yeah. But whatever your pit is, I believe that God can bring you out. Because, well, I know that God is a deliverer. That's right. God can set you free from anything. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, was, I was in my pit. And it's like, uh, I started, I came to church one day, and I came real late, and I, I didn't really want to be here, to be honest. I really didn't want to be here. As I, I came in, he was preaching, and the spirit had came over me. I tried my best to contain it. I tried to hold it in. The tears just started flowing. And I said, that's why I can't leave. So this is why I, I can't stop coming. Because I know what God wants to do with me. And as he was preaching, yeah. I don't even remember what he was preaching about. I know the spirit was in the building. Say that. And when I came in, it just hit me. I've been here for, I was probably there for one minute. Yeah. And the spirit fell over me. Yeah. And everybody was slain. And I just began to lay out on the floor. And I just began to call Jesus. And I began to cry. And just, I wanted it to leave me. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted it to be delivered so bad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. One day, I was in my room and I was listening to music. And as I was listening to the song, he, he can't put more on me than I can bear. I said, be me to it. And I was just like, this is why I'm chosen. This is why I can't leave. Because God is not going to put more than me than you know I can handle. That's why I didn't just go kill myself. That's why, you see what I'm saying, stuff didn't happen that I was thinking that was in my mind. That's why I thank God for keeping my mind. Anything could have happened. But one day God came in and delivered me from the pit. My thing is I overcame the pit. Oh, okay. I was at a point one time, I was like, this obedience, man. This obedience will get you nothing. I was at a point one time, I was a place where I shouldn't have been. And I think most of y'all know what happened. Some guys had snatched me up or whatever. And I was going to say it, but everybody did. Some guys had snatched me up, right, out of nowhere. They chased me. I ran. I thought I lost them. They caught me. Put me in the car. I'm so sorry. Yeah, but um, they was they was they was riding around with me. A lot of people say what well, they would have did, what they would have said. I would have did this and that. No, God shut up my mouth. I couldn't say nothing. I was looking at the guy. He was looking at me. I know where he just said, that's the wrong guy. Y'all got the wrong one. And the guy said, what you know? And he's like, pull over, let him out. They pulled over. They let me out. I didn't move the whole time. I just sat there and stared at him. And tears were coming at my face when they let me out. He said, you alright, man? They broke my phone at the beginning. They gave my phone back. He said, you good? He, he brushed my pants off. He said, you can go. When they pulled up, I stood there. I didn't know what to do. I stood there and looked up. I don't remember. I didn't remember what street I was on. I looked up at the street sign and my eyes were so blurry. I just started walking. Then I started running. Then my mind was just running. I looked around. I said, boy, says, I just went and I just stood there. Started talking. They said, what are you trying to say? I was just telling them this and this and that. I couldn't say nothing. Wow. God shut up my mouth, and what I'm saying is disobedience will get you nowhere. I was in a place where I should not have been. My mother had already, she called me and said, Terrence, where you at? And come here and meet me this place, but I did not go to the place where she told me to be. Oh, so I went somewhere else, just, just, just doing what I wanted to do. And that happened. I overcame the pit. That was a pit in my head. I could have been gone. I know what happened. I know how stuff like that, it, stuff like that ends terribly. Yeah. But it didn't happen to me. Yeah. God's grace and his mercy, I overcame the pit. I really overcame the pit. And I thank God for that all the time. And I, I yield to God because of that. Because I overcame the pit.